Getting data from the internet requires the use of a URL session. URL sessions are created with a URL session configuration. Unlike the old URL connection type used in Objective-C for many years, URL sessions have the benefit that each session acts independently from each other. They have different security settings, different caching, cookie storage, and timeouts. These settings are dependency injected into the URL session by a URL session configuration at init time. For basic settings, use the .default configuration. For secure session, which doesn't provide any caching, use an ephemeral configuration though it is not supported on Linux at this time. Or create your own instance, specifying your own cookie storage or security settings. This example sets the maximum number of connections per host to two. A few weeks ago, we discussed URLs, but a URL alone is often insufficient for actually getting a resource from an API point of view. A service may want additional headers, a method, maybe even an uploaded body. URL requests hold that additional information. In this example, we create a URL request with the URL, then set the method, add a header field, and set a body for an upload. In order to perform the retrieval, we need to create a URL session task, which is constructed for us by the URL session. Now you may be sitting there wondering, gee, it's taking a really, really long time for that to respond. Is my internet out? There's still one more thing we need to do. Data tasks have a suspend and resume system. They start out suspended, and they need to be resumed. Since it will actually work this time, it will happen on a background queue. So let's add a simple dispatch group from last week so we can wait for the response. Now we get a response in short order, assuming our internet access is actually working. But note that our URL session tasks are happening in the background. There are synchronous variants of each of these asynchronous methods, but we shouldn't use them. They block their queue and they don't provide progress or cancellation APIs. When our completion closure is called, it may contain a URL response. If it does, frequently the first thing we'll want to do is conditionally downcast it to an HTTP URL response. While the URL response class has basic fields for the MIME type, for instance, the HTTP URL response subclass has fields for the HTTP status codes and header fields. Based on what we find in the error and the URL response, we may decide to access the data. In the next video, we'll talk more about parsing data in common formats. Handling errors was always important, but for a network app, it's essential. Consult the possible errors to determine if they're the kind of thing that should be retried automatically, or wait for the user to take action before retrying. Errors with URL session tasks go beyond HTTP status codes. The error object return in the handler may contain special errors detectable only from the app, such as cancellation, a failure to connect to the internet, or a failure to find the host. In particular, you're likely to get errors from the URL error type. In this example, we catch specific errors that look like the internet connection was lost. On Apple platforms, we'll want to augment this with the SC Network Reachability API, which may be able to tell us when the connection returns. Sometimes the only way to know that the internet or a specific host is again reachable is to make another successful attempt to connect. Here's an example of not being able to find a specific host, which may indicate a server-side issue. There are also specific errors for handling advanced security credentials, but for mere HTTPS access, setting the scheme to HTTPS in the original request URL suffices. When a URL session task is canceled with the cancel method, the completion handler is still called, but it includes a cancel error. Specifically, the cancel error code on the URL types, which works very much like the Coco error type. Obviously, cancellation-like errors should not show up as warning messages to our users. They likely told us to cancel. One advantage of tasks as class objects with asynchronous callbacks is we can monitor progress. Once a task receives its initial response, we can count the number of bytes for the body. These provide the information to calculate speeds and expected wait times. Similarly, during upload, we have a second set of parameters. While we could provide a delegate object for the URL session and update these values when they change, keep in mind that if our network connection suddenly stops sending us bytes, we won't get a callback, but we'd be showing the users that we still had a higher rate. Today we learned how to set up a URL session with a specific configuration. Then we learned to craft URL requests starting with the URL and adding methods, headers, and even body data. 
Next, we learned to create URL session tasks and checked the URL response for HTTP status. We learned that handling networking errors is critically important and saw several examples. Networking built into the foundation module. Now that's swift.